From seven-time Pro Bowler Steve Tasker to the Chicago Bears' Charles Tillman, here are a few NFL legends who won't make the Hall of Fame, starting with wide receiver Steve Tasker. There's a slew of NFL players who are amazing at the game but haven't made it into the Hall of Fame. Though he's one of the best special teams players in NFL history, Steve Tasker still hasn't made the cut. He's earned no less than seven Pro Bowl nods from 1987 to 1995. In that time period, Steve helped the Bills become the first franchise to appear in, drumroll please, four consecutive Super Bowls. His brilliant gameplay was on display during the opening minutes of Super Bowl 27. Steve was lined up against rookie linebacker Robert Jones, who filled in for an injured starter. While the Cowboys punted from their own 16-yard line, Jones did not stand a chance against the pro athlete Steve Tasker, who knocked him out during an inside move before blocking Mike Saxon's punt. Steve's moves set up the game's first touchdown. Way to go, Tasker! Next in line we have Patrick Willis. The San Francisco 49ers middle linebacker was one of the scariest linebackers during his reign in the NFL. He was the 11th overall draft pick in the 2007 NFL Draft, and it was instantly pretty clear he was an impact player. He made the Pro Bowl in his amateur season and went on the first team All-Pro list. Talk about amazing! Even his rookie season was incredible. He has the all-time highest number of tackles in his rookie season. After his impressive debut in 2007, Patrick made the Pro Bowl six more times and the first team All-Pro list four more times. The only year he was unable to make the Pro Bowl in his entire career was his last year in the game, 2014. He only played six games that year. He led the NFL in tackles in 2009 and had over 100 combined tackles in six of his eight total years. Willis's stats were amazing. He was the heart and soul of the ferocious 49ers defense from 2007 to 2024. He played a pretty gigantic role in their defensive success as the captain for San Francisco. And there's no doubt he was the biggest reason they made it to the Super Bowl in 12. Because of his short NFL career, he might get knocked down a bit, but that doesn't mean he wasn't a dominant linebacker who needs to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. He was named a finalist in 22, but the 49ers linebacker was never inducted. Well, that sucks for him. Another player who never made it into the Hall of Fame is Charles Peanut Tillman. The Chicago Bears have a ton of Hall of Famers, but a couple more of their players deserve that title, especially Charles Tillman. Tillman's iconic peanut punch will always be remembered. Always. I mean, that move kind of became his signature move after he specialized in forcing fumbles throughout his career. It's me, Charles. Charles Tillman. A lot of people know me as Peanut, the former all- He was drafted in 2003 as the 35th pick overall and played 12 of his total 13 seasons with Chicago. In the span of his legendary career, Tillman forced 44 fumbles. That's insane. He led the league with 10 total fumbles in 2012, which is pretty remarkable for a defensive back. Even though Charles wasn't the biggest guy on the field, he was still one of the most impactful players in NFL history. These days, opposing defenses are taught how to do the peanut punch to cause a turnover for their team. Charles deserves a ton of credit for his talented defenses over the years. Yes, he might not have been the most talented cornerback, but if there's one person who deserves the Hall of Fame, it's him. And before we move on to the offensive side of things, we should talk about another one of the best defense players who hasn't made the Hall of Fame cut, Robert Mathis. This Indianapolis Colts edge rusher put the fear of God into his opponent offensive lines and QBs, even though his prime was short. Mathis was pretty impactful in his 13 seasons in the NFL. He was the best in the league at forced fumbles in 2006 and had eight forced fumbles in 2005. Yes, forced fumbles aren't the only thing that should get you into the Hall of Fame, but causing a lot of forced fumbles throughout your career is definitely noteworthy. When his career ended, he had a record of 52 forced fumbles. That's pretty impressive, especially considering the number of games other players next to him have played. Julius Peppers ranks second all-time with 51 total fumbles, but he played about four and a half seasons longer than Mathis did. Robert's best season was in 2013. 
he tied with Charles Tillman for the single season record. Robert ended up being a four-time Pro Bowler as well as a Super Bowl 41 champion. He was an impact player pretty much every season and only started in 121 games out of the 192 that he played, which means if he played more games, he could have accumulated way more stats. He was a semi-finalist in the 2022 HOF, but definitely deserved a place there. And now, let's move to the offensive side of things. By talking about one of the most entertaining players in the history of the NFL, Chad Johnson. A major personality during his time in the league, Chad's gotten into trouble a couple of times. These days, players usually have a pretty huge personality, so things might have been different if he played today. But although his personality was noteworthy, that's not the sole reason he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. He became eligible for the NFL Hall of Fame in 2017 after retiring post his 2011 season, and since then, he hasn't been able to achieve a spot as a semi-finalist but maybe that could change. Chad's one of the most memorable players in the league, and he definitely outshone the other greats of the Cincinnati Bengals. The WR ranks number one in the Bengals franchise history in receiving yards, with 10,783 receptions with 751 and receiving TDs with 66. On Undisputed, Chad and Shannon Sharp made a couple of excellent points about the Hall of Fame. I mean, yeah, comparing stats is a thing, but not everyone's in the same boat. These days, you can see numerous receivers on the same team reach a thousand receiving yards and not even blink. It was way more challenging for a player to reach the century mark back then. The rules were different back then, and allowed defenses to play way more aggressively than they do now, which made them seem less than they are. That was the same case with Chad Johnson. But all in all, the man was an electrifying wide receiver throughout his career and is one of the top players in the league who still hasn't made the Hall of Fame, just like the Atlanta Falcons linebacker Tommy Nobis. Now, this guy? He was Atlanta's first pick in the draft. During his 11-year tenure with the Falcons, he only played on just two winning teams. Even though his team wasn't always successful, he gained the recognition of his peers with his excellent gameplay. The LB earned five Pro Bowl selections and an All-Pro nod during his first seven seasons. He was named NFL's Rookie of the Year in 1966 and had a whopping total of 294 tackles that season. According to the Falcons' website, that's unofficially the most tackles ever credited to a player in NFL history, though he never made the Hall of Fame. But his early success earned him a place on the NFL's All-Decade team for the 1960s. Well, that's everything for some of the top NFL players who won't make it into the Hall of Fame.